So you're and, like, you um, better really get your emotions captured that what you want because this is a yeah, thirty five dollar shot. It's been, insane. It's, it's been insane, man. And I, I mean, everyone's been really gassed on the idea because so many models have been abused by photographers publishing their work without their permission. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today I have on a pretty cool creative strategist, designer, photographer. He's uh, the creative director at this agency that I did a little bit of work with uh, about like six months ago, probably now, uh, called Round Two. Um, super cool dude. I met, he's like one of the first, uh, I'd call him like uh, kind of Swiss Army knife creatives that I met out here in Los Angeles. And so, Welcome, Stu. How you doing? Thank you, thank you. Good to be here. I'm good. It's my first. Uh, I think this is my first podcast ever. I'm excited for the opportunity. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I've talked to like a good amount of people, and I have like some people lined up that I would consider like I don't know sought after or like like famous even in like this world and they're just like sure I've never done one before like I'll come on and I'm like yeah has no one ever asked you this I feel, like so many, I feel like so many of us like creative ADHD types that are like doing multiple things a day just like soothe ourselves by listening to a podcast mm -hmm. whether it's like complete bullshit and it's just like literally nothing educational just like dudes talking about football or whatever like I don't know one day the idea of like being on a podcast has always been in your head and you're just like okay cool this is gonna be fun yeah yeah I feel like um because I've been making the just other types of stuff and I'm, I'm the same way I'm, I'm always watching podcasts like even if they're just comedy and all that stuff just because I just like hearing people talk and it's kind of like background noise and it's always like sometimes you get burnout listening to like the same type of music and a lot of the music I like, isn't that good to listen to while working either. So yeah, dude, I, I got my gear in review and I had to like check myself. I was like, looking. I spent hours listening to just dudes talking about random dude shit. And I was like, none of this is benefiting my life whatsoever. The least I can do is listen to Joe Rogan, like interviewing people and hopefully get some tidbit of information that's going to actually yeah. help me. Yeah, even when I listen to Joe Rogan, I watch like the dumb ones, you know, so it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's against it. Um, <laughs> yeah. One thing, so you're uh, pretty versatile, I would say, like in a lot of different um, creative like uh, pursuits, but your, your main focus, you started with like photography, correct? And I was kind of wondering, um, like, how did you first get into that and what made you want to turn that into oh. a career? How much, how much time do we have? I'm going to have to like give you the medium version. I won't give you the short yeah, story. Yeah, I heard a little bit of stuff from you, but you can condense it or expand it however you feel comfortable. Okay. I'll try to condense it a bit. So I grew up in a small town in Texas. I feel like that's how most creatives start. They'll move out to LA from a small town. But um, early on in like high school, I just found myself like not really being a unique person. I didn't really have any identity at all. I grew up in a household without a father. So like as a young man, like having no dad, you kind of don't know who you are, what you're supposed to be. So you kind of become that chameleon kid in high school where you're just like jumping between crowd to crowd. And I think I just broken up, um, with my longest relationship of about a year and that had been my identity. I had nothing else. And I was like, you're like 16 at this time. Yeah, yeah, 16 or 17. I had taken photography classes in school. I had had a camera since eighth grade, but I wouldn't consider like anything I did photography. It was more like, oh, bring a camera around on a hike or something like that. Right. But when I really started pursuing it was when I literally had no identity. I was going through a breakup. And um, <laughs> funny enough, I like, I had a really close friend, uh, Dario. He's still my best friend to this day. He's like that high school best friend, hometown best friend he would always like try to get me out of the house after that happened. And every time he was an artist, a painter, he would try to get me to bring my camera and take pictures of him painting or pictures of us, like doing the shit where you have like a piece of like a log with an ember on it from a bonfire and you do the drawing and the oh, slow yeah, like shutter. Long exposure and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. That's yeah. Like high school shit right uh, and so just from doing that, I, um, started posting pictures. And as I started posting real photography, Instagram's algorithm started feeding me, um, this wave of what I call the lifestyle photographers of San Francisco back when street photography started to transition into, 
uh, like white blonde bitches on the Golden Gate Bridge with their hair blowing in the wind and yeah. shit with a super heavy fade on the tone curve. Right. Like that shit was being fed to my algorithm. And I was like, so like these photographers in San Francisco, these dudes are just hanging out with hot models all day. They have tons of followers and being the naive kid that I was like, that was my first goal. It was like, yeah, I want to do that. That was cool. Yeah. They're cool friends. And, um, at the time I followed the first person I followed was Jacory Lunsford on Instagram. He was starting this influencer content creator agency called H influencer collective at the time out of, um, out of San Francisco now known as the hub. And as he's starting this, like I just followed these, the, all these people in SF and I was like, I want to be a part of that circle so bad. And up until my life, like at this point, I had never done anything momentous, but over the next two years, which is like, I have to be the condensed version going into all that is a long period of time. Yeah. But over the two years, I found myself going through a ton of stuff, um, dropping out of school and then on a whim, uh, just driving to LA one day on a Sunday afternoon. Like I just took my grandma's car. She was getting <laughs> rest her soul. She was getting dementia. And I had this old Chrysler New Yorker that was like a tank and the family decided, okay, you have a strong American steel factory built car. You're going to give her that. And you're going to take her entry level shitty Toyota Yaris. Yeah. Just and so that, that. Thing had, yeah, that thing had no miles. And I was like, okay, I'll take her car. I took it out to Los Angeles. And, um, literally the next day, I moved in with Jacory and I had met Jacory at that time, like a year later or a year into doing photography. And it was a crazy experience finally meeting the dude. He taught me everything he knew. And the biggest thing he started teaching me at that point was like how to pitch brands and how to actually make money on your craft. And I think it all really became real for me when, you know, I pursued over those two years, tons of different creative communities, tons of different like you know, free opportunities. And then once I moved away, meeting Jacory. Um, and him teaching me how to pitch brands. I, I give this all to God, but like three days in, I landed five retainers. I got a full-time job at a tech startup and we had what I think all of our friend group would say was the best year of our lives. We were all 19, 20 year olds. All of us had fake IDs and we were making more money than our parents at the time. And we yeah. just literally were just like dumb kids with, actual jobs and we would just get drunk every night and there was like no goal in mind we were just like okay we got where we needed to be and we just coasted for a year and that was when i really became a photographer was when i started doing paint workout here yeah and that was um when you got here then you were 18 you would say probably 19 19 okay because i was actually talking with uh dan uh the other day and uh i thought that you were like you're how old are you now I'm 23. I just think about that. Okay. That's how I am 23 also, I think. Uh, sometimes I forget. But <laughs> I um, when I when he said that, because we were saying, we were talking about a little bit about how you seem to have a, done a lot of stuff in such, in like a short amount of time. And I was like, yeah, but he's like 28, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. And then I was, and then he's like, nah, dude, he's 23, I think. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit, it's even more impressive. So you really got like a head start yeah. for uh, 16 and everything going that thank hard. You. Yeah. And, um, no, thank you, man. What, uh, what, what gave you the, uh, inspiration to start the agency? Um, I don't ever think there was an inspiration to start an agency. My dream was never to have an agency. My goal from the minute I, I started photography and I started meeting Jacory. Something he taught me was to democratize the tools that you are given from other people and democratize meaning teach these to other people, give this yeah. to other people. And we always, no matter where we went, no matter what stage of our life Jacory and I got to, we were always creating communities around us. Um, Jacory is like one of the best person I know at just having like building like events for our friends to have things that like Friendsgiving, small things like that. Now that we get older, but back in the day it was like photo meetups, things like that. And I just noticed like the only reason I grew so quickly in the three and a half years of being out here was because I was constantly putting myself in the way of other great photographers and other great freelancers and learning from them all the time. And so when I got to a stage where I felt like I was starting to coast and I hadn't learned anything in a while, I was like, okay, now is the time to build my own community around me. I've joined yeah. so many, I've put so many groups in front of myself and now is the time to like really build something serious 
And um, this is right when Fee and I were like maybe four months into dating and we had done one influencer influencer trip together, you know, like the content trip model where you're like, yeah. Hey brands, give me like three brands on this trip. We'll bring a bunch of influencers. You guys get content plus posting influencers. You get a free trip and then director, I get to make maybe, maybe, maybe 500 to a thousand bucks. But for the most part, we're just trying to get a free trip out of this. Yeah. Um, but we were doing things like that. And then we had a two week lull in our schedule of, I guess, whatever the fuck we could find to do those days. And I was like, Hey, like, why don't we do that agency we've been talking about? Like, let's, let's start something together. And, um, I built the website in like two weeks and Damn. <laughs> those two weeks were so hectic. I just like sat down on Adderall. I didn't really know how to execute projects yet. And you being a designer, you understand like a project meaning from, from conception to preparation to execution to yeah. review you got you always got really, in somewhere on the timeline right on like i was just execution i yeah, never yeah. thought through ideas so like even building a website i didn't think through how to build a gallery or how to build anything i would just take different pieces of different landing pages and different project pages and different gallery pages from other websites put them together and just try to stamp my name on it yeah and um I guess yeah so the overarching goal of starting agency it wasn't just ever to start an agency it was to have a community around me and i found that within the first year of business we got real employees under our belt and i would say i was having a talk with our director of content mikey today and he asked me like if i'm happy with where i'm at with everything with the agency and i'm like i'm glowing like yeah. i have so many people around me to share the load and the burden with and i can take as much of that as i want so they can rest and they'll take it off me when i need to rest and it's the perfect team. Like having a team around you is always the goal, not not starting an agency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's always nice to have like a creative collective and kind of um, mind trust of just people that have a similar goals and you can tap into. And then it's even cooler if you're running as a business and making money off of it. So it's really like a win-win, I feel like in that department. And I know that I'm sure there's probably um, tons of things that you have to hurdle dealing with that. And one thing uh, I was always curious about is, so you mentioned a uh, fee and how does it, how do you kind of handle running that business with uh, your partner and then maintaining that and like your personal kind of relationship together? Um, that's a, these are good questions. Um, so we really burnt out together. Like and for those of you guys that are listening to this, that don't know, I run an agency with my girlfriend of, um, a little over two years now. And there were so many hurdles in the beginning because within the first eight months of building this, there was a severe deficit of of work on her end to my end. Um, a lot of it was a lot of like building the website, um, yeah. building decks for our agency, building our own branding and hiring freelancers. All of that kind of fell under my belt because that was my expertise where she was operations. She was the charisma. She was the face behind the agency. And so in the beginning, it was all on my shoulders. And it just so happened to be that her job outside of the agency doing influencer posts and, you know, influencer work for brands is a lot more seamless and easy to do on the weekends than me doing content. So my way of making money at the time, it was completely halted and we weren't taking money from the agency. I was working so hard on the agency. I couldn't have the time to plan paid work outside of it. And she didn't have as much work as me at the agency. And she had tons of paid shoots coming in and stuff on her end coming in. And I burnt through my savings and we never really communicated in a healthy way until one day I just blew up and I was like, fucking hate this. Like you, you get all like the success, all the money, all the jobs out of like things right now. And I'm stuck building this and like, like busting my ass building this agency and I have no money. I just burned through my savings. And I mean, we just kind of realized like I did a shitty part of communicating that. Like we never yeah. stopped. Like we just kind of kept running and running and running. We didn't stop to think about what we were doing. And so after we had that communication, like, it was at the end of last year, beginning of this year, um, things really started taking off and we met with our accountant at the end of the year and got our first like owner dividends in the company. And we actually saw money come in and I was like, okay, this is going to work. <laughs> so yeah. we put ourselves, we had a conversation. We're like, Hey, like things are always going to feel unequal, especially like for me, if I needed to take a day off to go shoot a client outside of the agency, it was like, Hey, why don't you bring that into the agency? 
Um, I, the fee has to cover for me that day if I leave. And there was so much inequality in our, the way we ran it. And so we just decided to put all of our, every single bit of money we make into the agency. So any influencer gigs she gets, she puts in the agency, anything I get for content or anything outside of that, which is, I don't do content now outside of the agency, but anything I do goes straight to the agency. And once we did that, we found so much like partnership because we were both working towards the same goal. We didn't have a side project to work on. Yeah. So that was our big first hurdle. And then the other thing we've learned how to do is really establish roles, um, not just amongst our team, but amongst ourselves and learn to be yeah. fluid in what we're doing. So she has roles now. She is our COO. She's our CRO, our CFO. <laughs> uh, she has a lot of roles. And like, if something falls through, like if an invoice doesn't get covered, I know she's our chief revenue officer. I need to go to her and tell her, hey, you fucked up. And she knows that as creative director, if something falls too short on the creative side and we don't go back and fix it, it's my fault and I'm doing something wrong. And so now we're able to really document who's doing what and... On top of that, we've learned to be fluid too. Like right now, she is managing a project that we're doing, one of our biggest projects of the year. And the reason she's managing is because it kind of falls on the influencer side of things and that's under operations. And so now I'm carrying the other side of the agency that she used to carry. And I'm doing quality control. I'm doing our strategy meetings with our team. And I'm kind of carrying her end now. And so learning to be fluid and give to each other is really big. And then I know I've gone on and on on this one. I'm sure this is the most boring question, but then the third one that was really big was... uh, I mean, I thought it was a great question that I asked actually, but... uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess... I'm just kidding. I feel like people are just here to hear about photography and design and shit, and they're like, stop talking. No, man, I want people to hear about the person behind the lens and all that stuff because I think it's like, um, it's, it's easy to separate that stuff, but, you know as a creative like professional i feel like you yourself is a lot more in your work than as if you were you know just like an accountant or something no one's going to be like no accountant is going to be offended if someone's like yo like those numbers suck or whatever you know you put all your like you put yourself into your work so i feel like the i think people should be like transparent kind of about uh how they like navigate those things and uh do you think that do you find it hard to um, separate that with uh, with fee when it comes to like when you guys go home? Are you more just like, hi, right, we're home. Like we'll talk about it at the office or something. Yeah, there, it it goes in ebbs and flows. We've mm-hmm. made it really clear to draw boundaries that we don't take shit from work home to the bed. Like we don't ever want to. If we have an argument at work or she fucks up big time, we don't take that home. But that line gets crossed a lot because ultimately if we're sassy with each other or rude with each other at work, it's like, we can't just go home and things be cool. Like we, this life has just become mushed together. Mm -hmm. And I think what we've just learned is like her and I are just super compatible. And if there's ever a time where we are just fighting all the time, it's either a problem in our business, like there's a fundamental problem in the way we're explaining our roles or the way we're sharing work, or there's a problem in, um, oh my God, I just drew up like what I was going to say. I think I was going to say in our communication. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing that's really helped is just making sure we're not taking on too much work. Anytime we take on too many projects, we take it home and it's like, it's never... I wouldn't say it's like passive aggressive, but we're just both so worn out from work. We can't even communicate what we're angry about. Like I'll get mad at her for like leaving clothes on the floor or something like that. And in reality, it goes all the way back to at the beginning of the day, she started a meeting late and it affected my other meeting or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes we're just total bitches to each other. And um, other days we're just super mature. We communicate really healthy, but all in all, like, we're so compatible. I just don't feel like there's anything that can like, we've tackled so many big issues. Like even all the little fights we have on the day to day, they just don't even feel like they're significant. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think it's good that you've been able to like get through all that. I mean, I think it would be a hard task for most people. Um, but in just in general of coming from the, your photography background and, and learning a lot in that when you, now that you've kind of been, how long have you been running it? Like a year, right? Or more? Year and three months. Do you, uh, now that you've kind of gotten over that, like 
you're kind of in the groove with everything now. Is there anything that you would have done differently or any advice that you would give to someone if they were to want to start like an endeavor like that? I don't have anything I would have done differently. I love everything I did. Even the, even the biggest fuck ups were just like, it was such good precursors to not fuck up now that we have bigger, bigger, bigger clients every day. The biggest things I would say that I've seen other people trying to do what we're doing fail at is if you cannot hand out work to other people, if you can't, um, if you can't hand out tasks to a team, if you can't build a team, if you can't handle letting go of a project and letting someone else fail and then giving them a teaching moment, you're never going to grow past yourself. And I think one thing I will pat myself on the back on is I've done a really, really good job of giving work out to a team and start giving work out to freelancers and trusting anyone with new work. And I see a lot of people who don't, like we've got employees that come in within one week and they're on the phone with clients and we just, you know, handle yeah. them through it. And I know some agencies that don't let their manager, their account managers talk to the client until they're like six months to a year in. I know a lot of people who will give designers like three test projects before they put them on a real project. And we were talking about every fucking agency is like redesign Chase Bank yeah. or redesign Apple and they'll give yeah. you bullshit projects like that. And I think just the best thing I did early on was I just started handing out work to anybody. I didn't give a fuck about making money. I cared more about making a team in the first year. And that gave us such a leg up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like that's like a respectable way to go about it. I mean, even when, uh, when I first met you and, uh, even though the first thing you were like, can you help me with this? It, in a way, it was a test, but it was going towards something that was actually real, not just like, yo, let's redesign Facebook's interface or whatever. Like it was actually for an event that you guys were doing. So worst case scenario, it still was like going towards something that would could be used and everything. Um, so did you feel... Do you feel that uh, before you kind of started with round two and even as a photographer, so um, these will be like, I guess, two different timelines, but is there anything that you wish you knew more about before you got into those things? Or did you enjoy kind of going into it more, I guess, like just guns blazing? I think the biggest hurdle for me in photography was... Um, learning about <laughs> learning about presets learning about presets changed everything i'm gonna be honest dude i haven't edited a photo by hand in probably three years just throw a preset on every fucking thing and i know there's so many people listening to this out there that really get lost in the art of creating shit and yeah I'm just not that guy man i just like the doors that photography opens and the people i get to meet so for me like when i figured out presets i started saving so much time um and yeah, then I think everyone, I, everyone does that in a certain part of their workflow. You know, it's just work smarter, not harder when it comes to certain things. Yeah. And then I think the thing I, I wish I would have learned earlier on with round two is um, how to take an L. I think for the longest time, I would hold on to projects that were going nowhere. I would push for clients that were doing nothing. And the minute I learned when to call my losses and when to say when was the minute we started having serious growth. And I think it also makes clients take you seriously too. I've had clients that'll push back on budget or push through different timelines, three different times before we've even been paid yet. Damn. And, um, I've, like, I mean, even today I had a, I had a conversation with a client and I was just like, Hey, we're not going to move forward on this. This isn't worth my time. You have till tomorrow to make a decision on this project. I didn't say it that rude, but that's kind of how I would table, huh? them. <laughs> and yeah, and I think I, I know so many freelancers that come to me with all of these problems and all of them revolve around them just not knowing when to cut their losses on a shitty client. At the end of the day, your yeah. your mental health is way more valuable. Your craft is more valuable than these 10, hour, 10 hours of conversation across an entire project with a client that knows nothing about what you do and yeah. wants to control everything. Yeah, I think that's true. I've, I've definitely ran into those situations and the less experience you have and the less you've been dealing with clients, you're a, a lot more like malleable and they're going to be able to work you like that. But, and I'm not even uh, like super, super experienced where like, I'm sure people that are like 20 years in, they don't ever fuck around. But even with me, like as I've gotten better and developed like, the way I do things and people are coming to me for something specific. 
if it's something that I don't think is going to work out or I don't feel comfortable or if they're already acting weird from the beginning, it's not even worth like talking with them. And you can always like I used to when I was a younger designer, I used to try to take on everything, even if I didn't know how to do it. Like someone would come to me for some crazy illustration and it would end up like not going well because I'm just like, I got to try everything. Now I'll just kick that stuff to people I know that are better at that specific like niche, you know? Yeah, man. I don't feel like designers have a problem with that. I've, every designer I know does not give a fuck about paid work. They do not give a fuck about the client. I have so many freelancers I work with and they're just like, when I come to designers, I come on my hands and knees and praise them. I'm like, hello, if you do have time for me, I would love to put money into your hands and I would love to give you a project to you full control. If not, don't even worry about it. I'm stupid for even asking. I have so many designers that will just like, I'll pitch them a project that's like great pay and everything. And they'll just be like, I'm taking a vacation. I don't really want to do it. Or they'll just like, they'll have so many reasons why they don't really care to do it. And I just like, I've never been able to, not that I ever toss around freelancers or like, I would never mistreat a freelancer considering I was one a year and a half ago, but designers do not take any shit from me or from other clients I've seen them work with. Designers are like, just like they're another breed. I don't know if you've noticed that, but they don't, they don't care about clients. I think I it know. comes on both sides of the spectrum. I think that the community is like pretty extreme that way that some are the way that you're saying. And then others, it's like, um, what did you need to change? Like, I'll do anything like, Oh, you only have $20. Like, sure. I'll design your website. Right. You know? you're right. They're it's polar hard. opposite. There's nowhere in the middle. There's no one who's just a well-rounded individual that cares about the client's needs, but knows when to put their own needs in front of them when it comes to mental health. It's on. And I feel like designers actually, they, they go between both ends. There's some days where they're like, me any work, I'll do anything for you. I will make all those revisions. Don't even worry about the extra charge. And then there's other days where it's like, how dare you fucking text me, email me like an adult. Like it's just like yeah. always on other ends. I think it all comes down to, you know, maybe if the person's saying, sure, I'll do anything. They just turned down someone that was offering them a bunch of money and they're like, oh, I regret it. I should have pushed that hard on them or something. <laughs> oh man. Have yeah, you been, I, um, have you been doing any, like, do you still do any like of your own, um, I know you do your own personal like projects, but pretty much all your paid works going through the agency now. Yeah. And then what ha have you been up to anything like just project wise that you're doing during like, we've been all kind of just sitting around, you know, and I feel like people are coming up with some pretty cool ideas. Uh, I actually, a month and a half ago, I don't know what sparked this, but I'll have like at the end of every month, I have a check in on my yearly goals and I'll see that I'm like not doing enough of something. And one of my big goals was to be more creative this year. Um, usually I don't ever set like in that sense, I'll set like a lot of goals that are kind of open-ended and then monthly I set different attainable goals to reach that open-ended response. So maybe it's like be more creative this year. And then month one, it's like mood board every day. Month two is like paint something. I don't know. But I kind of got to the end of last month and I realized I really wanted to create a book. Um, I'm slowly getting out of shooting, um, like doing photo shoots and I'm kind of getting out of photography and moving more into an art director role. So with doing that, I realized I really wanted to like leave a lasting impression or have some sort of legacy. So I decided I wanted to do an art book and uh, I don't know, my, I, I feel like I still have this premise of like, collaboration. That's how my whole career started was starting a creative collective with meetups and stuff. And then yeah. everything I've ever done has been collaborative. And so I wanted this book to be a collaborative process with models where they are directing the shoot and they get to write something as well. And so the, the idea behind the book is that each model will get a prompt, um, kind of like picking it from a hat, but they're all really, really deep general prompts that can go across the board. Like I've been posting some of them on my story, like have you experienced heartbreak? What's the worst pain you've ever felt? When was the happiest you've ever been and who was it with? Um, who is setting your expectations for your life? How do your parents' choices influence yours? Things like that. And um, letting them before the shoot think on that and decide how they want their shoot to convey their thoughts. And in the same way, letting them choose whether or not they want to claim their identity on the page. We're shooting everything on a big shot, which is, um, it shoots FP100C Polaroids. I've been posting a few of them 
trying to see if I have any on my wall, but I don't think yeah. I do. But I saw some of them. I'll throw some up on the video so people can see what we're talking about. Perfect. And then um, they're really, that, really expensive. Yeah, I was about to ask like you, are they? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, they're like they're like fifteen dollars a shot. Plus the flash cubes are like two dollars a pop. So I'm yeah. spending like somewhere fifty to eighty dollars per shoot. So you're and, like, um, you better really get your emotions captured that what you want because this is a yeah, thirty five dollar shot. It's been insane. It's, it's been insane, man. And I, I mean, everyone's been really gassed on the idea because so many models have been abused by photographers publishing their work without their permission, and to have full control not only over the photos but the words that they speak, the the way they portray themselves, whether or not they claim their identity next to the words that they're speaking, is so yeah. huge, and it builds such a deep collaboration that they take it 10 times more serious than any models ever taken a shoot with me. And I take it so much seriously because I am spending so much money on this. And on top of that, it's, it's so crazy. I was actually journaling about this this morning. I, I've never shot content before other than for the purpose of Instagram ever. And this is the first time I've ever shot content that I'm not able to publish for at least half a year to a year. Yeah. Like it's going to go in a book and I'm not going to publish it before then. And I put so much more effort into every shot knowing that it's going to be printed and I'm going to be preparing this for the next six months. Like I literally will spend five minutes lining up a shot. Whereas in the past, I'll literally hold this shit up like an SMG and just kind of like fire this shit away and hope that I get a good shot. And, um, yeah, when you put shit on paper, like it, it's real then, you know, I feel like even printing out some of my, uh, like work or even printing out work in process like when you just hang it up and look at it and you're trying to figure out what you can change every time you print it out like it never fails you see like something different or something wrong or just like or it's perfect because like now it's that it's living like there's something about like haptic like just and being able to feel it that i feel like is the reason that these things won't ever go away even though like we're all digital now. No one wants to buy a PDF art book, you know, everyone's still going to want to have it on their desk and feel it and just be able to like, I don't know. I feel like you'll be able to um, convey like the emotions of the models and what you were trying to get out of it more. I think that's a cool idea. And it kind of makes um, the models are almost like the editors in a way. I think that's like an interesting concept. Uh, all, of them, all of them are in like close contact throughout the process. There's, um, there's like a pre-email that goes out, um, letting them select their prompt. Um, we have a brief chat together on the phone talking about ideas. And then, um, what's really interesting about it is the big shot only has one foot as its focal length. You can only shoot one single focal length on it. You can't, you can't shoot from far away. You have to shoot it within about maybe two or three feet of the model. Oh, and really? so with only having one focal length on it, you have to get really fucking creative. Otherwise it all starts to look the same. So we've started getting really creative with like, doing full body shots by piecing together Polaroids from head to toe. We started shooting That's different right. body parts, weird shit like that. So is it and like a, it has to be on like a type of tripod thing? Is that how it's set up? No, 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 no. So I'm actually like, I'm actually free balling it when I shoot those like connected Polaroids. I'm just kind of like shooting, you pull it, you set a timer to pull it apart and then you just kind of eyeball where the bottom of your frame was and you just go straight back down. You're on such a tight like landscape that it's, it's not that hard to line it up. Um, my first shoot that I did for the book was a little bit rough. Uh, we had a, a few duds and it really hurt to see those Polaroids come out and peel them apart. They just looked like shit sometimes. And then as I started going through the second, the third, and now I'm going on my fourth and fifth shoot this week, things have been going a lot smoother. Um, I've been drinking a lot more <laughs> to get creative. Yeah. But it's been really special. Last night, I had a group of friends over that were working on it with me. We all got really drunk and shot some. It was like a. It was like a night out of like a seventies Hollywood movie. Yeah. Like clothes were taken off, shots were being fired, and like I was just sitting there and I was like, God, this feels so good to be like, not only having a good time and enjoying this company and like talking during a time when we're so disconnected in this world, but also getting to create alongside these people and let them have a very definitive process and part to play in this book it just felt right yeah yeah it's, it's always good to just go like full hunter s thompson every once in a while and just get like real crazy and drink and just work on something like in the middle of the night sometimes you like get some of the craziest shit out of it um 
What was I going to say? Oh, you were saying that. So we're all disconnected and a lot of stuff has been pretty weird. Uh, Has it been an issue with you, like navigating with shooting with the models and kind of setting up like people to like how how they're comfortable or whatever? No, dude, we got lucky. Fee, (laughs) Fee is just so plugged. I don't know how she has so many connections, but she has a connection with the COVID testing center and they come to our office weekly and test us. Nice. So we have weekly testing and any friends that we want to hang out with and throw parties with on the weekend, we'll have like 30 people come outside our office and get tested for free. They'll all come get tested. And then we know we can hang out with them. And we do that for shoots too. If we have a shoot coming up the next week, we text the models and we say, Hey, we have free testing for you at our office. Yeah. Come through, get tested. And it's made this a very painless, no anxiety, like, I almost feel like wrong for it because everyone knows we get tested. So no one's ever DMing me and being like, shame on you. You should be stopping the virus. They know I've been safe and I've covered all my bases, but it almost feels like, feel like it's wrong for me to have this advantage to get to this this world tested. Yeah. I feel like I'm playing this game on easy. Yeah. I mean, uh, cause that's like something you hear about, you know, like, uh, we were speaking of like, uh, Joe Rogan earlier. He's like, yeah, 15 minutes. We'll get you a test, get in here, record the podcast and you could just go. I've like had some times where, uh, like I go to, I went to Dodger stadium one time and I almost left cause it was so fucking long. It's horrible. And then it's like, if you don't want to wait in that fucking three hour line in the middle of your work day, you have to go pay $150. Yeah. I think that they'll come up with like uh, probably gonna have like an app or some shit at some point. Honestly, knowing like how how <laughs> shit goes down, <laughs> yeah. like, your emotions through the phone and be like, yeah, this dude has COVID yeah. for he sure. He looks bummed out. He probably has the virus. <laughs> Actually, quick tip: there's this thing called uh, Pixel or Pixels or Pixel testing or something. Oh, the mail-in online. one, right? Yeah, but if you put on there that you are mild to severe, like. Um, at risk or whatever, but you don't have it and you like answer everything right. You can look up, there's like cheap questions on what to answer. They'll send you one for free. And you just say you don't have insurance. Mm. Yeah. I remember my producer actually was sending me that cause I'm going to, I'm trying to set up a little studio space in the, at the house so I can bring, uh, get people tested and bring them in for like in-person ones. And, uh, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this without like, I don't want to make someone go to Dodger stadium. So it'll be a lot yeah. nicer to get those mail in ones. it will be cool to have this in person. I feel like I watch a lot of podcasts that have been done over the computer. And it's so hard to like, I don't know, this is really smooth right now. Like there's no latency at all. I feel like we're actually communicating. It feels yeah. nice to talk. But I feel like when you're in person, it's just like, it's so nice to see someone and just talk with them for an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, uh, speak like I, that's the reason i do it on um discord like sometimes it comes with a little bit of a harsher startup time like if someone isn't familiar with it but the bitrate and everything is so much better than like zoom or skype or anything like that yeah. this is how i used to game back in the day in high yeah. school and college. <laughs> yeah. i mean it's still today we're still using that me and my buddies um one thing i've noticed about you uh recently on on instagram is that you're like obsessed with the mid-century modern uh just furniture and design and i've always thought that stuff was like super cool but i was very ignorant to like how cool it could be you know i've only seen like certain like i guess the starter packs of those things and you've been posting like some crazy stuff is that uh when did you like kind of get really into that and have you like gotten any inspiration from any of that to bring into like your work Definitely. Yeah. I got into it. I think around the time I moved to Hollywood from Newport, I was in Newport for like eight months when I first moved to, I call it LA. Yeah. I know Newport is in LA, but living in Texas, if you live within 50 miles or a hundred miles of a city in Riverside's Texas. Riverside's like LA compared to Texas. So it's like, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, when I first um, moved up to Hollywood from Newport, I started noticing how much like having a space that I felt creative in like mattered to me. And that was around the time when I started, um, I think the person that really got me into furniture was, um, one of my old friends, Orion. Um, she, uh, we don't really talk anymore, but for a while I babysit her cat. When I go to her house, she had the most insane mid-century furniture and it was just such a vibe. I felt so creative there. I could shoot yeah. there. It was cool. And so then when I actually got the means to do it, you know, Fee and I moved in, we found like a permanent home here. 
I was ready. Like I had already spent a year training on Facebook marketplace. I had like really started diving deep and watching documentaries on what mid-century furniture actually meant, what designers were like in the U S versus in Europe and why this whole movement of furniture became such a big thing in the U S as like a competition yeah. from other countries. And it just, I don't know, it kind of like, there's not many things I find creative. A lot of it is just math and an algorithm to me. Like even photography, I don't feel creative with all the time, but furniture is something to me that is just like, it's so intimate. It's only for me. I don't do this for other people. Like this isn't something I wear every day. This is where I sit down. This yeah. is where I rest. And I would way rather put my money into furniture than clothes. And yeah, I find so much like inspiration from it. Yeah. It's actually weird. Like half my mood board wall is chairs other than photos now. Yeah, man. Some of those chairs, like they just like, they look like they wouldn't be comfortable, but at the same time, the most comfortable thing in the world, like the way that they're shaped and everything. I'm a fucking loser when it comes to comfort versus functionality or sorry, comfort versus like, actual style i yeah. i will spend so much money on something that i will like not even find comfort on just because i love the shapes and the way something looks in a room who are like who or what i guess it can be a what or some of like your biggest inspirations currently and maybe some stuff that we can throw in the description for some people to check out and if you're not if i'm putting you too much on the spot you can always send me some more stuff later as well uh, okay and I think in terms of the what, <clears throat> hold on. I need to actually go on my Instagram and see my saved. I need to look at my yeah. Pinterest really quick to see my saved shit because it kind of changes every day. Yeah, I got my, uh, my boy. I, I do. Um, at OK Dion on Instagram. Dion's, Dion's been an inspiration for the past couple months just because um, I was going through a weird time where like I didn't feel like my time was respected by like people I would shoot with. And I didn't really want to be yeah. planning shoots anymore. I owned an agency. I was so busy doing that. And like I found myself just planning shoots for the sake of like, hey, Stu is the guy that shoots with models. Like that's his account. That's what he's going to do. Yeah. And I found myself building this life for myself from my home from to my business to my relationships and i was like that's how i want to display myself online i want to show my life actually and i couldn't find a non-corny way to do it like i didn't want to be an influencer or like a blogger and just like posting my shit all day and posting yeah. pictures of like what i what i drank or things like that and then when i found okay dion he like he's brought film and photography and creativity into the world of blogging and talking about your life online in such a creative and just intimate way. The way he talks with his audience daily, the way that he uses furniture and his posts for inspiration, the way that he uses fashion as a form of inspiration, everything that he does just feels so true and creative. And he's definitely someone who inspires me on the daily. Um, so I yeah, we need more of that tasteful stuff in that world of bloggers and Starbucks and influencers it's definitely moving that direction to a more authentic place. But I think with it moving to an authentic place where it's like, it's no longer DSLR, it's all iPhone photos. It's also becoming very easy to make and it's becoming too repetitive. And so I think, you know, seeing people like Dion and there's just a, there's honestly a big crew of creators in New York that are just so talented. Um, seeing those people do what they do, it just kind of like reminds me that every single post I make is not really about like, engagement or anything yeah. like that like it's i can treat it like a book like i want every post to be i want it to be film and if it's going to be an iphone shot i want it to be really meaningful if i'm going to like post something with an important caption i want to interact with people so he's inspired me to do that i think in terms of furniture i found a lot of inspiration from vladimir kagan and mario bellini um I know Mario Bellini's an Italian designer. He actually made a couch that we have coming in pretty soon. Um, I don't know if I have a picture of it on the wall, but he... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we're, we're throwing it up. We got all that. I got the visual references. My yeah, brother, Cam I it all in. It's a Camelionda sofa, if you guys go find it. Real bubbly couch. Um, but a lot of the ways that he interpreted shape was through really bubbly, like extra quilted, cushiony designs on yeah. furniture. 
is really, really insane. And it was like, I feel like during a time when extreme lines and sharp edges were really, really popular when things were moving from mid century to mid century modern, and he was still here creating these timeless pieces that were actually comfortable and they actually put function into the design. Like this is a sofa that is a transformer. The arms in the back come apart so you can create an ottoman or an end piece out of any single piece. And they're connected by lanyards and tethers. And so they mix these crop and functional elements with fine garments and fabrics and leathers. It was almost like the Virgil Abloh furniture before that whole functional DIY work in progress style even became something. Damn, um, that sounds interesting. You can kind of whip it out for different occasions, move it all around. Yeah, and then I think the last person I'd say is inspiring me is um, our director of content, Mikey. He's one of our employees, but I've found myself the past two months every day asking myself, what would Mikey do? Cause this kid is just like, I shouldn't even say kid, he's older than me, but this dude is just so about loving people in the middle of his work day. Like everything he does is about loving others and making sure people are comfortable around him. He's never concerned about himself. He never looks out for his own needs. He's the last one to communicate that he's tired. He'll pick up the slack. And that's not even on an employee level. That's on a friend level too. I see like in group settings, this guy just puts everyone's needs before his own. And I think I can be the most selfish piece of shit on this planet sometimes. And I can get consumed with living in LA and just being around this industry and like being around this guy on a day-to-day -day basis is such a light. Like he is the most humble, non egotistical. That is something that's near impossible to find in this industry sometimes. Mm -hmm. And just the loving person I've ever met. And I think beyond creativity, I think on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't give a fuck how creative you are. If I'm around something that's full of light, laughter, and loving people and just doesn't have an ego, you could be the most untalented piece of shit on this earth. If you just love people well, everyone wants to be around you. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that that's an amazing answer. And I, a lot of people, I don't think, think about the question in the way of like inspiration as like in character traits or like personality. It's more about work and stuff, so... I thought that was like super cool and shout out Mikey for that, for sure. <laughs> throw a picture up on here. Maybe email me and ask me for a really bad photo of him. We'll throw it up on here, super pixelated and zoomed yeah, in. Yeah, I got you. We got to a notch after that hype up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what, um, one last thing is, uh, is there any places, uh, it's Stu Caldo, right? On Instagram, anything else you wanted to plug? Mm -hmm. Anything with anywhere people can check you out and all that. Um, round two agency, um, Maison de Ronde, I think that's how you say it in French. We just made an Instagram account for our house. Um, <laughs> it's called, I'm just going to say it in a classic American accent, Maison de Ronde. Okay. That is the and we'll, write it, round two. we'll write it out so they make sure that they know. Yeah, just saying. write it out. Maybe. <laughs> Just take part of me trying to say it out. I just throw it up there on the screen. <laughs> right. um, oh, let me shout out Ja'Cory Lunsford as well. The guy who I talked about in the beginning. Anytime I ever do speaking things, I have to shout him out because I feel like in everyone's life, you need somebody that gives you your big break and, and really pushes you to get to where you need to be. And this dude gave me the biggest big break ever, which was moving across the country and teaching me how to make money. And then teaching me on the middle of that, that making money is worthless without people to share with around you. That guy means everything to me. He's the best person ever. So throw him up there too. Awesome. Everyone go comment. He also loves you on his, on his recent post or something. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Shout out to Corey. And definitely got to send me a good picture of him. Throw it up. And <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> and then, yeah, but that's it. You heard him. Check it out. Check out the furniture page, Round 2 Agency and Stu Caldo on Instagram. And it's really nice talking with you again, man. And uh, looking forward to chatting with you again soon. Sweet. Thanks, man. All right. Peace out, everyone. Thank you.